right, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Minor Obsession. I'm Scott Lieberman with Sean Newton, and we've got a really special guest, former UNC Charlotte football player, linebacker, Jawan Foggy. Jawan, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm ready to give you guys some insight. <laughs> <laughs> so generally, before we dive into current state stuff, we like to give fans a chance to hear about where players came from. You know, you came to Charlotte. We loved watching you play on the field, but not every fan gets to know where you're from and how you got into football. So why don't we go back to growing up? Where did you grow up, and uh, how'd you get into football? Um, I was born in Greensboro, North Carolina. After I was born, we stayed in Greensboro for about two or three years. We stayed in Greensboro for about five years, actually. And then we moved to High Point. And uh, once I moved to High Point Sports, that's when it really became a part of my life. So I can actually make new friends and stuff in the city. And um, I picked up rec-, rec league football and just went on from there. Were you always a wide receiver growing up? Uh, <laughs> nah, early on I played, I actually played every position on the field actually. So I started, I first started off and played offensive guard and center. Then I went to fullback. Then I played running back sometimes. In middle school I played linebacker. That's where that defensive side came out of me. So going into that transition from high school to college, Charlotte was still a fairly new program when you were getting recruited. What, what made you choose Charlotte and how was kind of that selling pitch from coach Lambert or whoever was recruiting you specifically? Just have an opportunity to come in and um, actually be a part of history since it was an early program and everything that was going to happen while, while I was there was going to be history going in the books. So that was really like a big thing in my head because I wanted, to, after I left, to be remembered as my legacy. So I don't think there's there, there's a ton of, of people who have a bunch of athletic ability and are capable of playing multi sports, but you don't hear of too many college level athletes who make such a big transition like you did. And I'm not even sure how many fans realize that that happened. But your first two years, wide receiver, had some good numbers there. And then your last two years playing with the team, you you decide to swap over to the other side of the ball and play linebacker. How did that come about? Were you in the offseason just thinking, hey, maybe I could make a bigger impact over on the other side of the ball? My redshirt sophomore year when Aaron Curry was in the building a lot, he was always – putting that nugget in my ear, man, if you come to defense, you can make yourself a lot of money. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that was just one of those things where it just kept on building up, building up. At first, I wasn't trying to think about it because I had that prideful mindset that I'm an offensive player. I came in playing offense. I'm, I don't want to switch positions. I, I can't see myself playing defense. But um, at, after that season, it really zoomed on me, and I was really thinking about it because I was already a special teams player doing defensive things. So I was like, might as well go all in with it and go to defense. Sure. Can you can you talk a little bit about the difference in offense and defense? What do you enjoy more? I'm guessing you're going to lean towards defense now that you're you're kind of doing <laughs> it at the next level. Yeah, I'm leaning towards defense now. <laughs> <laughs> you still get the opportunity to catch the ball, so that's not changed. But mm-hmm. um, having that in, having the ability to make an impact play of the game, like if I'm getting the ball on defense, that's really game-changing and increases the chances of winning the game. So just having that ability to impact the game on one play is huge. Speaking of impact in plays, you were third in the country with six interceptions last year, finishing out your, your senior season. So you definitely made a huge impact. How, how did that feel? What was, was there anything you did differently coming into the 2018 season to really set you up for success in that interception, defense being taker type role there? Uh, it was a lot of help from Coach Glenn Spencer. His game put me in the right place at the right time, and it all came down to me actually catching the ball in most cases. And a lot of field work went on, on my behalf. This season I watched the most film that I've ever watched out my years in college, and the results showed and showed what it, it can do for you. Did you notice other players on the defensive end trying to do wide receiver drills? Were they jealous? Like, you had that kind of base <laughs> core competency there? Yeah, I, I got uh, Ben and Luca to get on the jugs a lot more and have these <laughs> catching the ball. <laughs> I like seeing the uh, spring game, the offensive line and defensive line trying to take those punts. That's my favorite part to see people who don't normally uh, catch balls trying to catch balls. 
Oh, yeah, that's like classic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Lambert transitioning out of Charlotte and Will Healy coming in. Have you had a chance to uh, catch up with any of the new coaching staff? And what are your thoughts there? Do you think we're headed down a, a path to continue to build on the foundation you help lay? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I've spoken to Coach Healy several occasions. Great guy. He's all about winning, and that's what they're going to bring to this program for sure. And I can see it already with the changes that they have made so far. And um, it's only going to get better. And this season, is, they're going to have a great season. With the players they have and the coaches they have in the building and that energy that's around that team, there's nothing but greatness to come out of that. Who's your defensive player to watch next season? You got somebody that in, in mind that you think is really going to take a step forward for us next year? Uh, Hasnip, of course, is going to be that guy. He's going to be the guy that everybody around the country is going to hear about at the end of this season. Ben DeLuke is going to do his thing, of course. Jeff Gimmel is the leader of that defense. Uh, Anthony Butler, his last season. All those guys are this their last season, so they have a tight, tight commodity with that in that room. So only great things are going to happen with all that force. Do you see us moving to top 10 in the country in defense since we were so close last year? Oh, yeah. It's, it's going to be repeated. I love it. So it sounds like you're still in communication with the university and, you know, depending on everything works, hopefully still be involved with, with the team at, in some capacity over the next couple of years. Oh yeah, I will be. I, uh, USC Charlotte has a special place in my heart. They gave me the opportunity to go to college and play football. So I'll be forever grateful for that opportunity and I can do, I'll do whatever I can. do. So, Let's talk about now the present and uh, life with the Bills. So draft day came around just a couple months ago, and shortly after you were picked up as an undrafted free agent from the Bills, were you in talks with a few teams who potentially had interest in you, or, or was it? did you know the Bills were coming for you right after the draft? Yeah, those two days leading up to the draft, I was getting calls from a good amount of teams. During the late rounds of that draft, the Bills said they were they were banking on me and they didn't want me really bad and stuff. So I kept a tight communication with them and with team my agent and stuff, and we got we got the deal in place and it worked out. That's awesome. So how how's your experience going so far? I know it's still fairly early, but you're you're at least doing OTAs and, and fun things with them. Oh yeah, it's it's a great experience being up here around this city. The blue collar mentality, everybody's working. That's what I've built home myself on as well. It's been a hard worker. And so I just feel pretty right in place. Have you come into contact with any Bills Mafia yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I said I was signing with the Bills, they, they attacked me that day. <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't gone through a table or anything cool yet, but maybe on the to-do list? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now, now, signing with... The Bills and going through that undrafted free agency, have you talked to any former Niners? Like we had Austin Duke on the, the podcast a few months ago who was probably one of the first people to go through that process as a as a Niner. Have you gone to him or anyone like that to to get some help on, on this transition? Oh, yeah. Um, all the guys that have been in this position, actually, I've talked to Dozer, Brandon Banks, Austin Duke, Larry – I've all picked up little nuggets from them and try to put it into myself to carry over to help me stay in this position that I am in right now. Anybody on the Bills defense that's really stood out as a, a good mentor that you've kind of hooked and really connected with over OTAs to, to help you make the team? Definitely uh, Lorenzo Alexander. His, his story is remarkable from being an offensive lineman making a defensive change he used to be offensive line and play D-line. Now he's playing linebacker. It took him to a year 10 or 12 to actually be a starter on defense. But his story is like, that's like, uh, I'm just trying to get anything I can get from him at this moment. Tremaine, he's a great guy. He's still young, just like me. He's learning everything. And he's a good guy to pick up rookie tips from. Matt Malalo, he's a linebacker as well. And I just pick up everything I can from those guys. Just ask some of the questions. That's awesome. One other thing for you is you've made the transition from high school to college. You overcame the obstacles and, and transitioned from offense to defense, and now you're, you know, you're trying to make a team. 
what what's uh, some advice you would provide to young athletes going to school and pursuing their athletic dream and any other advice you want to share with our listeners? If you have that dream, go for it. Because being in the NFL, being at this place where I am right now, that was my dream since day one. And um, I wasn't going to let nothing stop me from getting here. So definitely you always go for your dream. And you have to work to get what you want. You got to put the time in for it. You can't just say, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this and that to get there. But you actually have to do it instead of just talk about it. That's good advice. So we have one other question we generally ask every uh, former athlete that we have on the show. Over your time at Charlotte, what was your favorite moment as a Niner? What's that best feeling you get when you think back about being a Niner? Oh, man. I would say getting that first homecoming win, not this past season, but last year, that was our first homecoming football win since the program's been around. So that was definitely a big thing to be a part of. And see all the energy that was around the crowd after that game was fantastic. Good answer. I like that one. I remember that one. I was excited at that one. <laughs> <laughs> Anything not football related. Austin Duke told us. I think. I think he said John Davis making the shot against Oklahoma State. Yeah. Ah, that's the. I was thinking about that game too. That <laughs> game was crazy. Yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you taking the time. Uh, love catching up with all our former athletes, and, and really thank you for for spending some time with us and. Wish you the best of luck in mini camp and going on to rookie camp and all those things in the the preseason football realm. We'll definitely be watching any Buffalo Bills preseason games we can get down here in Charlotte, (laughs) uh, keeping up with you, and uh, hope to see you out on the field in 2019. I appreciate that. Thank you for allowing me to be on your show. Yep, absolutely. And hopefully we'll stay in touch and get you back on once – you know, you're a three-year veteran just running the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> That's the plan. <laughs> well, good luck. Thank you. Thank you.